I don't like the Beatles. I'm sorry, Beatles fans. I know you're everywhere. But it's just not my thing. It's not that they're a terrible band. Okay, we know that. They're quality musicians. Very musically talented. Every single one of them. John, Paul, George, and Ringo. Of course, I respect the Beatles. I respect all of their songs that annoy the shit out of me on the radio. Yeah, okay, go Beatles. Good for you. But it's just not my thing. Sorry, man. But okay, this is not, this video is not intended to trash on the Beatles and why I don't like the Beatles. It's not a video essay about why Andy doesn't like the Beatles. But I should do that someday. Maybe. The other day, I picked up this. The Beatles. Go figure, right? Yellow Submarine. Now, the reason I picked up this one... Uh, as opposed to any other Beatles movie, because there was, I don't know, three, four, five of them. I'd always heard that this one was, like, trippy, and it has crazy visuals. It's all animated with Beatles songs in it. And I kind of figured, well, you know, hey, uh, I'm into, like, movies with trippy visuals and that kind of thing. And uh, weird animated, obscure stuff that you can watch and just kind of laugh at how bizarre it is so I watched it and I thought I was gonna hate this but I didn't hate this starts in Pepperland which is a land underneath the ocean or something where uh, everybody lives in happy harmony and Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band aka the Beatles previous album they're just playing all the time and everybody's just there and having a great old time and you know being free and listening to music and just exploring the arts and whatever uh but they get invaded by the blue meanies the blue meanies are like they're mostly blue from what i remember and they hate music and they hate fun and they just want to ruin everybody else's fun and the blue meanies come and invade and they like paralyze or freeze all the happy people in Pepperland. So only one guy escapes. One guy escapes on a yellow submarine and he comes to, I don't know, I guess it's supposed to be like Liverpool or uh, London or wherever. Somewhere in the UK anyway. And it looks very bleak and industrial. So it's got to be like 1960s UK, right? And he meets with Ringo. From what I understand, the least of the Beatles. Sorry, Ringo. I like you. I think you're okay. I respect the work that you did with Thomas the Tank Engine. Just saying. Anyway. Yeah, the guy in the submarine meets with Ringo. And then they got to go meet the rest of the Beatles. Who are all introduced in some funny, psychedelic, trippy way. And they live in this weird house with a million doors. And a bunch of weird-ass shit going on behind all the doors. Like King Kong and Frankenstein. Like, it's intentionally trippy, right? Like, there's no way that this movie is not a full-length advertisement for LSD. I mean, let's be honest. Lucy in the sky with diamonds? We all know what that means, right? We're not stupid. So, you know, in 1968, viewers at the movie theaters weren't stupid either. Who do you think went to go see this movie? I mean, when you really get down to it, I guess you could show this to kids, and there's nothing, like, offensive or offensively violent or, you know, uh, any bad messages or anything in it. And it doesn't actively say, hey, drop acid, kids. It's probably mostly American and British teenagers went to go see it. They're like, dude, let's drop some acid and go see the Beatles movie, man. It's like watching a cartoon with Beatles music on acid. So it's this weird tale of the, the Beatles get on the yellow submarine and they travel through all these different worlds or seas i guess is what it's called like there's the sea of time where they go through there and they all like age for some stupid reason and they all like uh uh you know they all become old men with super long weird ass beards uh, and then they turn into like kids and babies and stuff and 
Then they go to like the Sea of Monsters, where there's uh, they they come across all these monsters under the sea, and uh, uh, then they go to like the Sea of Science, where a bunch of weird stuff happens, and they spout out some like science facts, and uh, the Sea of Holes, where they go there, and like there's all these holes which are kind of like portals to other dimensions or some crap. Uh, I don't know. It's dumb, it, but it's meant to be trippy, right? It's meant for you to sit back in the audience and, like, maybe... Oh, wow, the Beatles. People on drugs seem to like cartoons for some reason. So, I think this movie was made for people on drugs. Imagine that. So, it plays out through this story. They go through all these like, different lands and stuff like that. And eventually, they have to go rescue the people of Pepperland. And they get there. Uh, along the way, they meet this, like, little weird dude that's... Oh, so annoying, has the worst, most annoying voice, and he looks like a turkey or a chicken or something, like a plucked chicken with a mask on, and just the voice just grates in my ears, like uh, like a lot of Beatles songs do. Speaking of which, there's a billion, okay, like 12, Beatles songs in this movie. And okay, that's understandable, right? It's their movie. Why the hell wouldn't they put as many songs in there as they can? And I gotta make a confession. I actually don't hate them all. Yellow Submarine, the title track, is probably, to me, actually not that bad a song. I mean, I don't, uh, I'm never gonna buy it, you know, purchase it on iTunes or buy the CD or the LP or cassette or whatever. But I don't mind that song. I think it's kind of cool that they made a whole movie out of that one song. So that's okay. Then they play songs like uh, All You Need Is Love. I don't like that song. The Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, because of course they're characters in this movie. And I hate that song. Don't ask me why, but there's some Beatles songs I just don't like. Hey Jude. Don't even come at me with Hey Jude. I fucking hate that song. But there's one song that I actually... It pisses me off. But I can't get that song out of my head now. And it's a song called All Together Now. I'm not going to sing it. Even though it's going on in my head right now. I just I don't want to promote that song. I just want to let you know that that freaking song is stuck in my head now. And I can't get it out of my head. And I resent that. As much as I like those trippy visuals and things like that, it gets really tiresome after a while. And uh, there's one point where it's even like just flashing colors. And if you are prone to seizures or anything like that, don't watch Beatles Yellow Submarine because there's some parts in there that are gonna they're gonna mess you up. It was just I found it way too long. Like the movie's 90 minutes. It could have been cut down to at least an hour, you know. They could have cut 30 minutes out of this movie uh, and still kept all the same amount of songs. And it would have been tighter, more clean, and it, without all these stupid extra visuals. Like, uh, some of them are cool, some of them are funny, uh, but it's just too much, man. And it ends pretty much exactly like you would think. Okay, there's all these people in Pepperland that are oppressed because they don't get to express themselves musically or whatever because the Blue Meanies just hate everything and they don't want people to have fun. Uh, so the Beatles dress up as Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club band because I guess they're supposed to be different people or something. I don't know. And they play some music, and all the Blue Meanies are defeated and convinced that they're just a bunch of idiots, because, you know, all you need is love, apparently. And a bunch of other Beatles songs and a shit ton of drugs. Yeah, you know, so it ends, and of course, you know, a happy ending. And you just knew that was coming, the whole movie. You know, watching them, like, convert all the Blue Meanies and, like, save all the... All the wonderful people, and, like, uh, it's, it's, it's like, come on, just end the movie already. Like, we get it. The animators probably had a great time doing this, because they, they were probably all on drugs, too. But they were getting paid. 
to make trippy images for all them teenagers tripping out on LSD in the audience. Uh, I can just imagine the movie theaters around this time. It was probably a pretty funky vibe, I guess. And probably a lot of laughter and a lot of maybe a couple bad trips. Who knows? Overall, though, it wasn't a negative viewing experience for me. It didn't make me like the Beatles any more than I already do or do not. Um, but like I said, that one freaking song is stuck in my head now. Um, is that a positive? I don't know. So, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I didn't regret watching it. I'm probably not going to watch it again. You know, given my track record with the Beatles. And I don't know. To me, personally, this is a C plus Because I liked it more than I thought I would. But if you're a Beatles fan, you're probably going to give this like A, A+. Plus. Yeah, you go. Great. Good for you. You can sit in your room and listen to Beatles albums all you want. Just keep the door closed because I don't want to hear that. <laughs>